All right, just to make sure we're respecting everyone's time. We want to say thank all of you for attending uh, this third session um, for Get On Board in these business presentations. Um, throughout the session, you're going to hear uh, from a number of great organizations. Uh, some are current contractors, others, uh, you know, not yet. Um, and we <clears throat> hope that everyone here, you know, learns a lot, learns about these organizations well, and uh, as I've been saying most of the week, hope form some new partnerships. Next slide. As a housekeeping measure, um, as with this session and throughout the entire week, all of them are being recorded and then they will be posted online following the event. We should have them all up next week. So if you do miss any portion of this, um, no need to completely write furiously. Uh, all of this information, <clears throat> the entire session, along with everything else this week will be posted um, and a link will be sent out going to be posted on both the CREATE and the 75th Street SIP um, program websites. So um, be aware of that. Uh, we do ask that um, any attendees, while you are not speaking, uh, that you please have your cameras off and, um, and your speakers on mute, uh, just to uh, make sure that there's no background noise and we can really lock in on who's ever speaking. Um, please, for all attendees, submit your questions um, at the bottom of the page using the Q&A feature. Uh, we'll be monitoring questions throughout the entire event. We will be answering all the questions at the end of the session. So please take it, anything pops in, questions you have, whether it's very specific, more broad, um, about someone's experience, um, please use the Q&A. And uh, like I said, we'll be monitoring those throughout the entire entire session. Uh, and then um, we'll have a, you know, a moderated Q&A session at the end. And with that, um, again, thank you all. And I'd like to turn it over to Scott Perkins with Prairie, <coughs> excuse me, with Prairie Engineers. Great, <clears throat> thank you, Keith. Um, as, as Keith said, I'm Scott Perkins with Prairie Engineers. I, I serve as a GIS professional and I assist with business development for our utilities and industry market sector. Next slide, please. A little bit about Prairie Engineers. We were formed in 2010. We're a woman owned small business with our WBE and 8A certification as an economically disadvantaged woman owned small from the Small Business Administration. We're at um, 55 employees and growing with open hiring um, requisitions posted presently. We have a record of success and ongoing line of business with Illinois DOT and with the Capital Development Board. And we also have um, prior experience working with several of the class one freight hauling railroads. Next slide, please. What, um, what we think is of interest for our service offerings to this audience is our engineering and environmental services and our surveying services. Um, Looking at, at the CREATE program and at the guidance documents, we feel that phase one and phase two services are, are where we could assist and help um, as a small business subcontractor. We'd like to call some attention to our experience working on the Chicago to Quad Cities passenger rail line. We were involved with both the engineering design um, and hydraulic analysis of structures on that and on the environmental permitting. Uh, these slides will be available as Keith mentioned, so I'm not going to read every bullet point to you, but we've been working on the Chicago to Quad Cities passenger rail for um, a little over four years now and I'm proud of that experience. Next slide, please. Our surveying services, um, we work on both land and water. So as you can see in the center column, there's a picture of our one of our hydrographic survey vessels. So we do underwater inspections, underwater imaging, single beam and multi-beam sonar collection and bottom condition assessments with sub-bottom profilers. Our survey capabilities on the land side include nine licensed land surveyors with licensure in, in 12 of the Midwestern states. So uh, topographic surveying, construction staking and layout, boundary surveying, ALTA surveys, um, if it requires a tripod and a guy with a vest and a helmet, we're there for you. Next slide, please. Uh, we have seven offices in the Illinois, Iowa, Missouri region. So um, from those geographic locations, we have survey capabilities and engineering capabilities in each of those offices. 
So it gives us a, a nice large Midwestern footprint that um, aligns well with the, with the rail um, services um, that were discussed on the opening session. So with that, that's a quick look at Prairie Engineers. Uh, these slides will be posted. So you'll have my phone number and my email addresses in the distribution list um, that have gone out for Create. So, you know, thank you for this opportunity to give you a quick look at Prairie Engineers. And I will now turn it over to Michelle with Madkin Security. Thank you, Scott. Good morning and greetings from Madkin Security LLC. I am Michelle Millicent and I am the owner of Madkin Security LLC. And I would like to thank the Create program for allowing me this opportunity to introduce my company and the services that we offer and to partner with businesses for any of the upcoming projects. A little bit about our story. We are a small minority woman-owned security company that offer armed and unarmed guard and protection services. We help our clients to develop a comprehensive plan for job site safety and security, also while enhancing the safety of employees who are working at those sites. Next slide. Research and data show that thefts from construction sites and businesses account for $1 billion in annual losses for companies due to loss of supplies, materials, and the biggest cost is time. When thefts occur, you have to replace the supplies and materials as well as account for delays and productivity. Thefts will affect your project schedules and can also affect the relationship with your clients. While technologies such as camera systems and lighting are invaluable tools, criminals are also savvy and they are totally motivated to defeat those tools. I know for a fact that physical security guards will maximize any security effort in place. And I also know that visibility is a key deterrent for thefts. And with the presence of security guards, guards can always investigate activity in real time. At Madigan Security, we provide a visible security service where our guards physically check vulnerable areas to prevent security breaches. Criminal activity can take place anywhere from outside threats as well as internal company threats and breaches. Our guards also utilize a barcode scan system for periodic checks throughout the work sites and businesses to provide real-time instances. Next slide. Madigan security employees are fully background checked and randomly drug tested. Our employees are in company uniforms at all times with identifiers for visibility. Our employee personnel include off-duty law enforcement personnel, personnel that are licensed and certified from local accredited security schools. And I've also partnered with HireVet.org to employ our retired veterans. Next slide, please. I bring to this company 20 years of law enforcement experience. And I also use my experience to enhance my employees. My certifications include MBE, WBE, and DBE City of Chicago, the Illinois Tollway SBI Program, the Illinois Unified Certification Program DBE, and the State of Illinois Central Management Services WMBE. In part, I will state that the overall goal in site security is to prevent losses occurring from criminal activity. Uh, also, in all of your financial decisions, the cost of added site security must be balanced against the cost of thefts. Consider Madigan Security to help deter those increased costs and to help deter the increased cost of your insurance premiums when you have to file theft claims. My contact information will be posted. Thank you so much for your listening ear. And now I would like to introduce Jennifer of Jacobs. Thank you, Michelle. Um, I'm talking about Jacobs, Jacobs Engineering. Um, we, you can see my contact information right here, so you're welcome to get a hold of me um, as we give questions as we proceed through my slides here. So next slide. I wanted to emphasize some of the things that Jacobs does to live our promise of diversity and inclusion. 
So on the right part of the slide, you'll see all of Jacob's internal organizations related to you know, diversity and inclusion. So you can see we have a, a we're a part of uh, black, uh, uh, black and brown organizations where we have Jacob's Women's Network. And we, for all of these, um, for climate change, for all of these uh, different groups, we have set meeting set meetings and networking events. So it's a really great opportunity for Jacobs to support all of the uh, all the inclusion and all the people that we have working for us. Um, we are about 50,000 people internationally. Um, we also have on the left side, this is uh, Jacobs external outreach to um, include diversity and inclusion. So if you're a DBE and want to learn more about us, there's a survey um, link that will be sent with the slides. So you can definitely get in there and, um, and, and find out some more information. We have a general session with an industry day of Jacob Shares overview and corporate values. We have breakout sessions by market sector. Um, so we look forward to, to hearing from you and having you learn more about us. Next slide. All right, so I wanted to talk a little bit about some of our projects. So what we have going on right now on the upper left is our Amtrak uh, nationwide contract. So our Amtrak nationwide contract, Jacobs manages, procures, and administrates part of the full design and construction of projects, such as facility maintenance, bridge replacements, track work, security enhancements, and station improvements. So that's one of the one of the projects that we're currently involved in. On uh, the upper right, you see the NICDI project. So the NICDI project is the Northern Indiana Commuter Transit District. Um, so this is for the West Lake Corridor, which is a new corridor. We're working with FH Passion. It's a design build. Jacobs is responsible for an eight mile long West Lake Corridor extension of the Lake Sh South Shore Lake South Shore Line and the Metro Electric District. And that will increase access for the growing area of Lake County in Indiana to connect it to Chicago. It's an existing double track and we're located to Hammond and a third track will be added to connect the Westlake extension to Dyer. So that's just a little bit of information about that uh, really large project that we're, we're heavily involved in right now. On the lower left is the 130th and Torrance. Um, NS, we work for Norfolk Southern on this one. So we do work for a number of the class one railroads. Uh, for this one, we did plan review and construction inspection of a new grade separation, which replaced two existing at grade crossings. It was a 400 foot long double track through truss span bridge, as you see here. So that was a really interesting project to work on. On the bottom right, you, some of you may be familiar with this, the CTA RPM project, which is going on right now on the north side. It's a 10 mile stretch of rail. It's a $1.3 billion work in the phase one alone um, to rebuild four stations, track and support structures. So we're a part of a joint venture to provide construction related support services. Next slide, please. And now I'd like to talk a little bit about another project that we have going on, which directly involves Metra um, and the Crete partners, which includes IDOT and many of the freight railroads. So it's an enormous project going on right now. We're in design. Um, so design commenced in September of 2020. So we really are just kind of hitting the um, starting line of our 24 month design phase. The portion of this project that we're working on, which is P2 is part of 75th Street corridor, uh, but P2 in particular will connect the Southwest service line that Metro has to the Rock Island district line so that Metro will have a dedicated line that is not as impacted by freight as it currently has been. Uh, we currently have nine DBE partners that are working with us on this project. So we're really proud to have these partners help us with things like community outreach, educational outreach in the community. Uh, we also have subs working on all the other important elements, such as structural, civil, electrical, survey, um, geotech, vibration monitoring, and uh, permitting and utilities. So those are some really important things that we're uh, currently working on with this project. All right, so hold on a second. Um, I'm not sure where my Zoom window just went. All right, I seem to have lost my Zoom window. 
Oh, there it is. Okay, sorry about that. All right, so we are, as I said, with uh, P2 and with other projects, we are committed to developing and promoting our DBE partners. And as part of that goal, uh, we have, for instance, the Illinois Tollway Master Plan. Um, that's one of the projects where we promote our DBE university. We're also going to be doing this on P2. It offers our DBE firms that we're teamed with classes on select topics to be held typically within our office. So we're hoping um, COVID uh, will you know, be a little bit a little bit better in the future and we'll be able to get those those um, DBEs back in our office to offer these as part of P2. Um, the tollway one that we did was the recipient of the 2017 Hasea Mentor Protege Program Award. Um, so we continue to enjoy doing this and hope to continue it in the future. And if you'd like to be um, considered as part of Jacob's supplier registration, please go to our website. Uh, again, this will be in the slides that will be emailed out to you. So thank you for the opportunity. I really appreciate uh, being able to share a little bit about Jacob's with you today. All right, thank you very much. Now we're gonna turn it over to Jose with the shirt. Thank you, Jack, and I'm making sure my mute button is uh, turned off uh, before, I, before, before I speak. So uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Jose Suarez. I am a risk management consultant with Assurance. Uh, Assurance is a independent broker where we help our clients secure the commercial insurance policies um, that they need to work with federal and state agencies. Um, I personally work with MBE, DBE, and WBE firms. Uh, Assurance was established in 1961. Um, our very first client was Plody Construction. From there, we have delved deep into the construction industry um, and have made a name for ourselves in, the, in that industry. I specifically work with my clients to help secure uh, larger contracts, fulfill the insurance requirements, um, uh, perform risk analysis for the risk management programs. Um, we do have in-house services as well, such as surety and bonding, safety services, and a risk transfer team for general contractors that utilize a lot of subs. So um, we are very heavily involved in the construction industry. Uh, and I, I myself am involved um, both in HACIA, the CAGC, and the ICC. Um, next slide, please. So a little bit about our expertise. Um, when we say that Assurance does construction, um, it's pretty much all we do uh, in my, uh, my department, um, my focus. Um, we exist to make our clients better, to protect them, and to give them the keys so they can continue to have tremendous success and continue to grow their company. So um, you'll see that we have about 80 insurance professionals dedicated solely to construction. That makes up the team of account managers, client service representatives, safety professionals, and claim advocates. We have about six safety advocates dedicated to construction. These safety advocates are uh, individuals that perform on-site safety inspections, safety audits, can revamp safety manuals, and can um, help with any OSHA requirements as well. We have over 59 years serving the construction industry, with Plody being our, our, our one of our largest clients. Um, we have about 40 plus workers' compensation markets that we can access for our clients as well. We have six OSHA trainings and in-house safety teams. Um, prior to COVID, we did uh, host OSHA 30 hours, OSHA 10 hours in person, both in English and in Spanish for our clients, um, open to them as well. We have about 650 plus clients nationwide. Th this is not the number of total clients. These are the, this is the number of total construction clients that we have at Assurance. We place over $250 million worth of premiums for our clients. And 100% of every staff member, every service person that we have is CRIS designated, which means they're a construction risk insurance specialist designated. We know construction. We know how to respond to construction. We know how to respond to contracts. We know how to issue certificates that will allow you to continue to work and focus on what you need to do, which is your uh, building, uh, planning, designing, and then we'll take care of the insurance um, uh, portion of it for you. Next slide, please. Our industry focus, uh, heavy, heavily involved with general contractors, we represent some of the largest names, Novak, Krasinski, George Solid, those are all clients, artists and contractors, we also help out, uh, which would be consist of any subcontractors that are working on behalf of any primes, any GCs. We also represent specialty contractors, 
uh, whether it be uh, niche, niche industries such as foam insulation, um, bridges, uh, road work. Uh, Street and Road is another heavy player. Uh, we are heavily involved in RATDA. Um, we, we have a big focus there. Uh, we, we service both commercial and residential projects, both union and non-union. Um, we're really heavily into environmental construction as well, um, with your professional liability policies, your errors omissions, your pollution policies. We have an entire department that can analyze those for you as well. Your underground, underground contractors, those that are working uh, underground, um, whether it's sewer pavement, uh, wiring, cabling, we also um, have a dedicated team um, that focuses on that. And then real estate development as well, builders, owners, we can implement CSIP and wrap up projects for, for companies. We can help subs that are enrolling into CSIP and wrap up projects to ensure that they're not being, uh, the insurance companies aren't double dipping, excuse me, double dipping for any of their costs as well. And again, uh, our focus is, is construction. We help our clients with general liability policies, uh, workers' comp policies, umbrella policies, property policies, builders' risk, you name it. I, I believe um, there was a, a reference to uh, tools or, or material being stolen on the job site. Our policies would cover that, and we would represent you for any claims um, that you need for that as well. Um, next slide, please. So uh, Assurance is not just a broker that's going to help you obtain your policies. We're much more than that. We'll uh, be able to assess a complete risk management program for you. Uh, what tends to happen with, with subcontractors and, and general contractors is once they get to a stage where they get into the idea of scaling or growth mode, and you have multiple projects that start to happen, this is the prime time where accidents, injuries can occur. We want to be there for you to manage those claims, to assess your risk, to make sure that you continue to grow without any, any impediments. We can do mon analysis, we can do EMR um, projections out up until 18 months to help you with that as well. Um, you, know, you have enough in your plate from, from the construction industry itself with increasing material costs, with litigation and disputes, with safety challenges. You can lean on us to help you with those. We have a complex legal team. We have an in-house safety team. We can help you respond to any type of uh, claim that, that takes place. And we can also assess your policies to make sure that they are compliant or that you're safeguarded against anything that's taking place now with COVID-19 and the impact of that on the workers' comp side, professional liability policies, and so forth. Uh, next slide, please. I'll leave this slide up uh, just for uh, about 30 seconds so everyone can read it. Um, Jerry Ball, who's the CFO of Skender Construction. Skender has been a client of ours for over 10 years. Uh, Skender started as a, a small GC firm um, when they first came on to Assurance. Um, fast forward the clock now, and they're one of the largest GCs, leading GCs here um, in the Chicagoland area. When Skender first came over, um, it, it was you know piecing together the program. Now they have a very sophisticated program. We can help clients from startup stage up until multi-million dollar revenue stage. That's, we have markets that will respond to both any type of growth mode or any type of stage that a company is in. And we have the type of markets that it wouldn't be any, you wouldn't have required to leave your current broker because you're in growth mode, because you're taking on new projects. We can help you along the, the, along the way with each step of the way whether it's through safety, whether it's through risk transfer, whether it's through risk analysis, or whether it's just competing out your current program with all our other markets to see if we can save you money on your insurance costs. So uh, please look to us for any type of assistance. The next slide, please. This is my contact information. You can reach me via mobile number. You can reach me via email, LinkedIn, or Twitter. Um, I just want to say, uh, I, I see two clients that we have here, so I want to give them a shout out. Uh, Tiffany Flame from Biofoam has been a client for ours for many years, um, and we, we've uh, partnered up together, and uh, thank you for your trust. And then I also see Empire Construction on here, Lubna Khan. Um, she came aboard to Assurance Effective January of this year, uh, so thank you for your partnership. And um, that's all I've got to share for you today about Assurance. Thank you for taking the time uh, to listen to me. 
uh, about my company, about what I do, and up and up next, uh, my good friend Jillian Garcia from Valdez Engineering. Thank you very much, Jose. I appreciate it. And I appreciate everyone who's joining us this morning. I see that there's quite a bit of participation and I know you have busy schedules and things to do. So I'll be rounding it out today with the last presentation, but I really appreciate your attention and um, uh, assisting this morning's presentation. I'm Jillian Garcia with Valdez Engineering Company. And um, I am the manager of external affairs here. So my role is to build relationships with the associations we belong to, especially those that help promote uh, supplier diversity. So we're quite active with the Chicago Minority Supplier Development Council, ASEA, the Hispanic American um, Construction Industry Association, as well as the Illinois Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and US Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. And I, in addition to those roles, I also help build relationships with our clients, identify new project opportunities that we can support them on, um, identify some of their needs where they might need some assistance, and also um, build relationships with the public at large. Uh, we are a 200 person firm. Um, we provide engineering, project management, and other technical services to various clients. Our markets include um, in addition to the work we um, are focused on with, at the federal, state, and lo local levels, we are focused in the markets of chemicals, oil and gas, utilities, and life sciences as well. And so these are some of the companies um, that we've worked with in the past and currently work with. Um, our a company is family owned. Um, we were founded in 1992 by Robert Valdez. He immigrated to the United States from Cuba. So we are a Hispanic MBE and his family and him continue to run the business to today. They're very involved and they're focused on customer satisfaction. And you can clearly see that in their work ethic and the, um, the time they're, they're, they're spending with us working alongside of us. Um, so we actually still work with the very first client we had in 1992, and we do have about 85% of repeat business, which I think is a testament to their focus on client satisfaction, um, making certain that they are working in their client's best interest. And you can go ahead um, to the next slide, please. Here you'll see a little bit about our a record of uh, safety success. And so our focus, number one priority is on safety for our, um, our colleagues. Um, here you'll see that we have an EMR rating that's well below industry average and has been for quite a while. We have zero OSHA recordables in the past 10 years and that's after working about 3,500,000 uh, work hours. Our TRI our rating is zero and we have a dedicated director of safety. And many people might say, well, that's because you're an engineering firm, you're in the office. And that's actually not um, the case in all instances because we do have quite a large percentage of our staff that's working seconded on site. So they are encountering situations where they need to have an eye out for safety and they're making certain that they're um, getting through their day, doing their work correctly at a high quality level, but also making certain that they're safe when they return home at the end of the day. We do do um, execute work coast to coast. We are based in the Chicagoland area in Lombard, but we do have offices in Indiana and uh, Louisville and Houston, um, but we do execute work nationwide. And so there are various projects. We even have seconded staff in different places around the country. You can go ahead and go to the next slide. Thank you. So these are some of our um, engineering and design services. You'll see first that these are our capabilities as it refers to phases of different projects. So we're able to start from the beginning, maybe doing feasibility studies or something to set you up for success. Um, of course, we can do the detail engineering design type work that's necessary to make certain that a project is set up correctly. Um, we are able to manage that project as far as project management goes, um, make certain that there's any construction support you might need, um, inspection services. So we'll follow that project through um, as, as long as you need us, or if you just want us to stop in for a certain phase of the project, we can also execute that work as well. Here are some of our top core services. So you'll see our uh, CSA um, engineering, piping and plant layout, stress analysis, instrumentation controls, mechanical and electrical engineering as well. And we have other engineering disciplines too. These are just the top ones I wanted to highlight today. Some of our additional services as well, um, something that's been pretty uh, interesting to people, especially in this current environment, has been laser scanning and 3D modeling to limit um, field visits. 
And so um, this is something that we started early 2000s and we have um, de been developing the knowledge. I know technology has brought the cost of this down, but we've been in it since the beginning and we have quite a uh, developed knowledge uh, to be able to integrate this into our design process. We can also do procurement services, project controls and scheduling and uh, adding staff if needed to projects. So go ahead. You can advance to the next slide. And then I'm just going to go quickly through a couple of our project profiles, especially those that have been focused around railroad work. So this first one is a propane loading rack. Um, so we were responsible for adding eight new uh, loading locations that were fitting into the existing model. Something Valdez does really well is um, we are good at evaluating existing conditions and then changing um, or updating or renovating or adapting things to meet new regulations, so retrofitting things. That's where we really excel um, at making certain that existing conditions are understood and then updated to where you need them to be. And then also solving problems. So if there's an issue, you'll see that in the last project I'm going to highlight, there's a problem that needs to be addressed that's causing um, maybe an issue with safety for people who are operating in that area, then that's where we come in and we make certain we identify the issue and solve it. In this propane loading rack, um, we were adding, like I said, the um, new loading locations and then the new rail for extension as well as the piping required. So here you'll see capabilities um, including project management, process engineering, instrumentation and controls, electrical, mechanical, and CSA engineering. The next one is a rail car coal unloading facility. This is where we brought our laser scanning and 3D modeling into play. Um, so you'll see that that was used. That actually is a model right there on the left-hand side. Um, so the capabilities here were the CSA engineering, mechanical, structural analysis, and design using that 3D um, package. Um, and then we wanted to make certain that nothing um, moving forward would be an issue as far as the coal getting um, stuck in the chute, so they performed some discrete element modeling as well. Um, you can go ahead and move along to the next slide. Um, so at the top of this slide is a synthetic gypsum rail unloading facility. So you see that it's quite a heavy duty <laughs> setup there. And so we brought um, our knowledge to help um, build the new synthetic gypsum unloading facility. So it included civil work of about a mile and a half mile track loop into the new facility, and then the design of conveyors and hoppers, as well as the design of a 50 foot deep um, concrete unloading pit. And so we brought into this detail engineering project scheduling and procurement. So those are evidenced in this project. And finally, the sulfur loading project. Um, this was where we came in and solved a problem the operators were being exposed to too much um, H2S. And so we wanted to limit that during loading operations and of course, improve the fall protections for them as well. And so we per performed the engineering services, um, including project management, process, electrical controls, mechanical piping and structural engineering to make certain that that was um, made safe and good for the operators there. You can um, end up on our last slide, I believe. I just wanted to thank everyone, especially the CREATE program for hosting us today. I know, um, I, I imagine I'm speaking on behalf of all the other co companies as well when I say that this was a great opportunity to gain exposure, but also to meet other companies in this space. Um, so if you saw anything, um, basically from here, we can do three things. If you saw anything that would be of interest to your company, um, definitely contact me. My contact information is there and I can help um, set up a capabilities presentation. If you saw a technology that you thought would be interesting and you want our company to maybe do a lunch and learn, we can do it virtual. Um, please contact me and let me know. Or if there's anything, um, let's say you just specifically want to talk to somebody, um, I can connect you with that person within our organization and make certain that you um, get, get some information about what you're looking to do. And that about wraps it up. I'm going to turn it over to Chrissy, who is going to round out the day today with some questions and answers. Great, thank you so much, Jillian. Um, just a reminder to those of us who are listening in, if you do have any questions, please submit them through the Q&A chat. 
Um, we're not going to be having any sort of raising your hands or unmuting. Um, additionally, if you don't have any questions now, but you think of them over the next few days or weeks, feel free to send us an email to info at createprogram.org. Uh, my team is actively monitoring those and respond to emails through that medium. Additionally, createprogram.org is a great resource. That's our website. And at the bottom of createprogram.org is a little contact us tab, which you can also use to reach us. Um, just to kind of, you know, reiterate what Jillian said, um, thank you to everyone for being here. I know that kind of the final morning of a conference is always kind of a rough morning. Uh, even if we didn't all go out together last night, it's still kind of the final push. And so I'm really excited to see that we have over 70 folks on the call right now. And I've actually been watching that number um, rise throughout the presentation. So it's been fun to see the numbers growing. So again, thank you all for joining. Um, if anyone does have questions, please go ahead and enter them into the chat. In the meantime, I'm going to read a few we've received so far. Um, so one question that I have is actually for assurance. Um, does your company help with construction railroad liability insurance? So you can feel free panelists to unmute yourself and yeah, thank you. Um, so I'll, I'll take that question. Um, we do. Um, railroad liability insurance is needed when you're we're working with about 100 feet of any railroad track, um, usually required by either Metro, CTA, um, there's two ways you can go around getting this policy. You can either get a standalone policy because your current general liability is excluding any rail, any exposure to railroads. That's the more expensive route is getting an independent um, policy for railroad liability. The easiest and most cost-effective way is to work with the carrier to get that exclusion removed and to get an endorsement place that will allow you to work within that railroad um, project. So anywhere... Even if you're as close as 25 feet, um, that's when things can kind of get hairy. But typically it, within even 100 feet, um, whether you're doing any underground work, overhead work, doesn't matter. If you're close to the railroad, you're gonna be required to carry that coverage. Jose, I'm really glad you're on the call today because oftentimes I know that DBEs and firms looking to get into railroad work often are sort of, um, the insurance requirements seen as a big barrier and kind of a big fear. So I'm glad to see that you seem to be our resident expert. And I think for folks that are looking to get into it, I'm gonna go ahead and just say, you have Jose's information, go ahead and call him. And you know you can probably pick his ear about how to do this and see what's possible for you. So again, glad you're here because oftentimes we have these questions and personally it's like, I don't know. So anyways, glad you're here. Um, next question I have is for Jacobs. And just so we kind of get a flavor for, you know, how the create program projects work and just generally kind of sense of opportunities. Um, can you possibly speak to, you know, if you, if you know this, how many subs you have working on the P2 design project? And then just kind of what kind of subs you have? Sure. We have 12 subconsultants, um, nine of which are DBE firms. So the consultants are doing kind of everything I listed in um, one of my last slides. So, so they're doing, we have um, community outreach. We have uh, permitting and utilities and stakeholder engagement. Uh, we have landscape architecture. So that kind of goes with the community engagement team. We have structural support, um, civil roadway engineering support. We have electrical we have survey and geotech, uh, vibration monitoring, and permits and utilities. Uh, those are the main areas that our 12 subs are covering on that project. Awesome, thanks. I think what's important for those of us on the call just to know is that, you know, as Jennifer's explained, there is a variety of contracting opportunities. And because many of the CREATE programs are federally funded, there are uh, disadvantaged business enterprise requirements. So. Let's say you're not, you know, a super advanced uh, technical engineer, but your firm does do, as Jennifer mentioned, communications or community outreach. Like there is a place for you on Create. So I just want to encourage folks to continue to stay in part of the conversation. Thanks so much, Jennifer. Yep, thank you. Um, I also just want to note that um, I think Jennifer's slide mentioned the Mentor Protege program. Um, and so that kind of reminds me of we had a panel Tuesday morning with um, the public agencies that spoke to um, sort of how to work with them through procurement and some of their opportunities. And so just as a reminder to folks, if you are interested in possibly um, getting involved with IDOT's um, mentor protege program, which kind of pairs DBEs and larger firms to sort of, you know, learn from each other and kind of help them mentor each other, um, definitely recommend watching Pam's, um, or sorry, Pam Simon from IDOT was in that presentation from Tuesday morning and definitely recommend looking into that. Um, 
all of the presentations from this uh, week will be posted to the CREATE program website by May 7th, so by next Friday. And so if you missed one or you want to go back and hear more, the actual PDFs for the presentations as well as these recordings will be available on the CREATE program website. Um, one question we have and might be one that folks don't have an answer to, but if you do, we'd love to hear it. Um, do any companies on the line today provide internships for high school students in um, inner city areas? You know, part of why we ask that is because a lot of our CREATE program projects are in disadvantaged communities and we're curious, you know, what possible pathways already exist regarding um, high school internship programs. Hey, Chrissy. Excuse me, this is Sam Tuck too, and I just want to add on to that. Uh, one of the things that we're looking at uh, in the CREATE program, pretty much a lot of people are aware of it, we've received so many federal grants uh, from FRA, from FHWA. One of the new criteria for the grants are uh, racial equity. So within our environmental footprint, this is one of the things we have been looking at uh, for the environmental justice is to provide economic growth. Uh, one of the things is if a kid is working, getting the experience that keeps him out of trouble, I can say that for myself as a kid growing up in the area. And uh, I'm at the position I'm in now as the Bureau Chief over the uh, CREATE Rail Freight Pro Program with Illinois Department of Transportation. We had to really reach out to our kids and give them an opportunity to let them understand what these things are. So if you do have these programs, it's, it's very welcome with the CREATE program. Uh, just want to you know, reiterate what Chrissy said and put a little emphasis on it, more emphasis. It's imperative that we do that for our brown and black and women. We, we gotta get these kids out here. For, I mean, to every gender, every race, everything, we need to really get them involved to understand. Uh, so it takes a whole village to raise uh, these kids. It does. So please, if you do have it, just let's, let's work on it. And if you don't, we have avenues where we're trying to work on that and bring that in, especially when we're working with CPS. Jillian, I think you were going to perhaps respond to that. I was. Um, uh, I can't say that we offer internships for high school students, but we do to um, local community colleges and colleges um, in the area. And so, um, but what we do do in the high schools is we will go and when, at a time when we could, um, and maybe this will be able to get picked up soon, but we would do... Um, kind of present engineering principles to their science classes. And so we'd have a couple of our engineers um, maybe work on a bridge design um, activity or some other type of fun creative activity. So those are the some of the ways that we are engaging our local community. Um, and we always look for ways to increase those opportunities. And just to sort of follow up on what Sam said earlier, um, for folks that maybe are not familiar with the CREATE program, um, so our largest project is the 75th Street Corridor Improvement Project. And that's, so it's actually four component projects and it's kind of one master project. And uh, Jennifer's team from Jacobs is working on that. I just want to let folks know that if you go to their website, which is um, 75thsip.org, there's a community benefits tab. And that's a really great way to learn more about what the CREATE program is currently doing regarding um, kind of, you know, youth engagement, local communities, and some of our education programs, which is like, as Jillian said, similar things regarding visiting um, high school students, getting them involved in projects, same with elementary school students. So if um, you want to learn more about Mr. Tuck's um, call to action, definitely check out the 75thsip.org website. Um, another question that I have, and I'm hoping perhaps um, Scott can answer this, and if not, Scott, you know, let me know, but I think um, in addition to railroads, you know, being sort of known for, in, you know, tough insurance requirements, there's always also the element of safety and safety first. I'm curious if you can talk at all regarding um, safety and working with the railroads in that regard. Um, 
if not there we go sorry there about that go. okay i was okay. like it's okay. yeah. not covered. perfect thanks scott Right. Um, all of our survey staff, all of our field personnel, the environmentalists and the surveyors go through the e-rail safe, you know, um, safety training and credentialing process. So that, that that's kind of the, um, that's the baseline requirement for most of the class one freight hauling railroads. Um, some of the short haul rail lines also have their own independent, you know, safety trainings that we have to participate in. Uh, there are two short haul rail lines in Indiana that have separate training from the e-rail safe. Um, so that that is the that the e-rail safe is kind of the starting point, you know, for that process. That's really great to know. Thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. Um, you know, I will say just from my own element, it's interesting working on the railroads as a public involvement professional, because when we have our, you know, our in-person meetings, it always starts the safety briefing where it is, you know, where the where are the restrooms? Who's CPR certified? Where's the defibrillator? Don't trip over the cord. So I just wanna really emphasize that um, when it comes to working with the CREATE program, you know, it's safety first is always kind of the mentality. And then also, as Sam said, you know, community engagement. So for firms that wanna work on CREATE, the more that you can kind of bring those sort of elements into the conversation, I think the better that you will, um, the better your company will do in terms of uh, possible contracting opportunities. Um, so if there are any additional questions from the audience, please go ahead and enter them into the chat right now. Um, otherwise, I'm going to turn it back over to Mr. Sam Tuck with um, the Illinois Department of Transportation to close us out. And it looks like no more. So Sam, go for it. Thank you, sir. Oh, we have one question there. Uh, Chrissy, you want to throw that out? I think that's the question. Uh, which one is it? I think somebody was talking about uh, high schools and so forth. It just popped up. Maybe there was somebody sending something to me. Oh, I think it's just um, a firm letting us know that they provide these opportunities. Hire 360 has a youth engagement program for high school students and them to the construction trades which is great to remember. So Hire 360 is one of our, one of our attendees this week. This week. Um, all attendees we posted to the CREATE program website. So if you're curious to see who else attended this event, that's a great place to see who else is here. So Hire 360. That's Thanks, great. Sam. Appreciate it. Uh, that's really good. And I'm glad to see that. So as Chrissy said, uh, I'm, I'm glad everyone was able to participate. Hopefully you was able to participate all this week, early uh, earlier in the game, uh, Monday when we started this. Hope this was valuable information for you. Uh, I see that we did, did something a little different than what we usually do. And even under the circumstances that we had to deal with, uh, with the pandemic and not being able to view, uh, you know, see each other person to person, it, it was still amazing for us to have the opportunity to do this and, and still keep things moving. I applaud everyone who is doing that and still working and making the economic growth here in the state of Illinois with, like I said, under all these circumstances with the pandemic. But I need you to stay in touch with us. If we did not address any questions that you had uh, on here, you think about it last minute, please get in contact with us. As you can see, here's our email, info at program. Our email is there. Our website, createprogram.org. Uh, we're on Facebook, as you can see, and we're on Twitter. Please follow us. Stay in touch. Um, we welcome all of the comments that we can get because we want to get better and we want to be able to help and provide so everybody can participate in this huge program, create, and even on 75th Street set. So, again, thank everyone for participating today and even for the whole event. Uh, Chrissy, I'm going to let you close it out. You've been doing such a great job. So I, I think that's pretty much it. And uh, thank you. Yeah, you know, what more is there to say? I just, as, as you know, as Sam and everyone has said, thank you all. Have a great rest of your Thursday. And we look forward to staying in touch. So thanks, everybody.